Comics are totally awesome. And I'm totally awesome too. Zerker from Parody Press. Back it today. Terraform Comics, Hybrids, The Sons of Gods, Volume 1, Trash Day. When everyday people develop godlike abilities, it is up to a small band of heroes to expose an evil superhuman trafficking ring. This 128-page volume merges history with fiction in an exciting, fast-paced adventure. Get your copy now. First man, you know the drill. A college kid is imbued with great power and likes it. Penumbra has other plans and hand delivers him to Monarch. A fun 64 page action packed comic book hearkening back to the glory days of Marvel Comics only on Indiegogo. Like the 
Hello, hello. Good morning, guys and gals. Good to see you. I am Don Chin. Welcome to another fun edition of Comics and Coffee, our Wednesday edition, starting off a little earlier than the normal nine o'clock Pacific noon Eastern time slot. I wanted to open some mail and then we're going to have our, our beloved guests on, which are Aaron and Frequency Girl from the upcoming project Mavericks. Looks really awesome. So um, if you guys are new to the channel, this is a, a weekly show that I do where I, I just kind of talk about comics. I usually have a guest on. Uh, I just kind of like to shoot the breeze in a casual atmosphere. Um, I'm actually in a new studio. This this behind me is what used to be the, uh, the downstairs studio. And um, it's I'm actually operating on a green screen right now so I can switch out my uh, my backgrounds as I wish I let me kind of show you the, how that works my friend that's a insurance agent gave me a green screen so I can like I can be like I'm, I'm up, up against a brick wall or I'm in a in an elegant living room somewhere with a piano <laughs> we actually have a piano that actually looks a lot like that but our fireplace is not as quite as elaborate as, as that one. Um, I could I could be a hype meister and put Beard Zerker, you know, during the whole show if you guys want to see Beard Zerker. Um, what else do I got? I got hamsters. I could I could I could be hit, sitting here talking and chatting about the hamsters. Uh, if you guys have been watching lately, I've been I've got an alter ego called Pizza Sametti. Uh, pizza Pizza Metti. And uh, I, I basically try to look like Pete Samedi, and I put on a, um, a stocking cap and a fake beard and mustache with long hair. And I, I, I do a show, and I just try to try to be a, a parody of Pete. And uh, Pete was kind enough to send me a picture of his studio, so I can pretend I'm in his studio anytime I want. So that's that's pretty cool. So this is all an illusion, guys. If I just took the uh, the green screen off this is what it would look like it's kind of boring that way but it's pretty fun we're having fun in the in the digital age so just to kind of get you accustomed to the uh you know to the green screen i thought let's just ease you guys into it uh, I'll, I'll just pretend i'm in my downstairs studio which is what you guys are used to seeing so we're having fun today it's going to be fun uh yeah i see our guests are in the green room so i'm going to go ahead and, and i told them i'm going to open some mail and then i'm going to have them come in but before we do that let me let me go ahead and say hi to the chat here it looks like we got a good uh dozen people in the chat let's see here let's see if i can figure out this whole stream yard thing we've got uh joe and sontag in the house hey joe joe is an awesome creator he's got a book that he's working on um i'll try to make you guys moderators as we're talking so you can post links to your your upcoming projects or your YouTube channel or your Twitter, whatever you want. But on the uh, on the YouTube description of our show, I always usually try to post links to the projects that I'm going to be talking about. So if you uh, are curious and you want to back these pro projects, just look at the YouTube uh, links and you should be able to just click them and go to the Indiegogo page or the Twitter page or whatever of our of our guests today. And that includes the mail that I'm going to open. So I try to be a little bit organized and, um, you know, and, and make it easy. So if you guys want to support these 
awesome creators you can just click. So let's see. Hi to Joe. Uh, Eric is in the house. Hey, Brian. So Brian is a, he's a creator. He's in the West. And I just found out he only lives like five minutes away from my, my brother and sister-in-law um, in the hot part of the country. And we just traded books in the last week. And I got Aerith, uh tape one. I read it. It's really fun. He's got some cool swag in there. I, I didn't get one of those cool pink boxes. Those are going to be collector's items. He's got this really cool um, box that he shipped in that looks like a cassette from the 80s. But it's like hot pink. And uh, I saw Michael Bancroft promoting that. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so anyway, yeah, definitely Aerith's still in demand, his second book, and I think he's very close to hitting 10,000. So please back Brian's Aerith saga on Indiegogo. Uh, we've got Black Rose Comics. Hello, Black Rose. Good to see you. Thank you for coming. I don't know where you're at, but uh, you're catching a morning show. Thank you for making the time. We have Marvin Wynn in the house from The Edge. Marvin has been our guest a couple times. And uh, he's got a new action figure coming out, which I played uh, beginning of the show, which is uh, of one of his characters. I think it's called Blaine. And he's already got another one um, from The Edge that he's he's uh, shown us before. So that's a great comic book project. You can pick it up um, either online. He's got a Facebook page. He's got distribution through the, you know all the local comic book stores. So definitely check out The Edge. Um, let's see. Anybody else? We see Infinity. Hey, Alejandro. Good morning, my friend. I'm, I, I guess, or maybe good evening where you're at, but uh, good afternoon. I'm going to be on Alejandro's show tomorrow. He's got a round table of a lot of creators. I think he's got like close to 10 creators that are going to be talking about um, just social, social things in the comic book industry and I'm not sure who else is going to be on there, Alejandro, but you can feel free to pitch that in the chat, some of the other guests. I think Rini's going to be on there, and maybe Antoine, Dennison, uh, Infinity, me, I think John Hervey's going to be there. So it should be a fun chat. It's probably going to be like a three-hour event, like a symposium of comic book um, people just to kind of see how – the the uh, you know what how you've been treated I think in the industry based on maybe our uh, you know our ethnicity I, I think that might be kind of what he's going to be talking about but we'll see it should be fun so that's tomorrow I believe um, that's one o'clock my time which is Pacific time and four o'clock Eastern time if I'm wrong Alejandro please uh, feel free to correct me uh, Robert Shepard good to see you uh, nefarious. <laughs> yeah, guys, I had a little bit of technical difficulty. My internet was wonky and um, I started the show and then I had to reboot, but StreamYard is still working in the background. So I think you guys had three minutes of dead air where it was just the background. So I apologize. I always like to try to um, come on and play some trailers to entertain you before the show. And then, and then we get into it. So I apologize for that. Just working out a few kinks, but we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Um, let's see. Anybody else here in the chat? I don't reckon. Oh, we got Jeff Potts. Hi, Jeff. Good to see you. Aria. Hey, how are you doing, my brother? I see I cut off my locks, Aria, from the last time you were on here. He was on last week when I was Pizza Medi, and we were comparing our, our lustrous black hair with each other. And uh, happy birthday again. Hope you had a great birthday, Aria. He's a he's a young whippersnapper. I'm an old guy, but we still hang out. That's kind of that's kind of cool. I like that. Uh, let's see, Heronberg, my faithful moderator. Good to see you. Yes, we we're starting a little earlier. Um, I'm already at nine o'clock, so I'm gonna run a little bit late. But I'll, I'll try to get through the mail fr fairly quickly so my guests can get on here. So, anyways, Abominable Grizzly, thank you for being here. You're not late. Everything's fine. I had a little bit of a delay here. Um, okay, so we're good. We're good. Yes, nefarious. Thank you. All right. So anyways, guys, let me go ahead and open the mail here. Let me put up my special mail call banner. I actually have a, a, 
a cute little video that I'm gonna I'm gonna um, play here. So let me take off one banner and then we'll the one that says please like and subscribe. Uh, yeah, let's watch this little video I I got from uh, the internet that that is gonna be my kind of my opening video whenever I I have mail. So let me see if I can find it real quick. Here we go. Enjoy. Isn't that cute? I don't know what I call that rabbit. Maybe bun zerker, bunny zerker. All right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the mail mail today. So the first package we have is from our friend Luke Stone of Hybrids fame. He is working hard. He's a full-time pastor as well. Family man. Awesome dude. Um, I'm actually drinking out of my Hybrids cup this morning. Thank you, Luke. He's got a, this is an awesome cup, by the way. If you I mean, I thought my x Force cup was okay for the first one I ever did, but Luke's got this down to an art. He like takes the whole, the whole image of the cup with a wraparound image. And then the inside of the cup is black, which is classy. And the handle is black. So um, thank you, Luke, for the, for the cool mug. It's, it's one of my favorites. I like the, uh, the, the graphics on that. So Anyway, so Luke sent me this package. I was a little worried because it got kind of dinged in the mail, but I did kind of pre-open it before the show, and I think everything's intact. So let's see what we got here. Um, all right, this is pretty sweet. This is like a limited trash man action figure. It comes completely um, assembled on card, and this is a hand-painted action figure. So he only had a handful of these and I'm not a huge action figure collector but when somebody does something cool I like to uh, I like to support it and especially when they're very limited and they're hand painted so you don't see that a whole lot and um, let me just make sure I got my highest resolution on my camera today guys so I think I do yeah I think I do okay oh wait a second I'm on my wife's computer which is a lot better than the one that I used downstairs. So um, hopefully the the picture is crisper and not as you know blurry as it was before. But anyways, oh wow! So right on the back, Luke signs it. He's the creator, and then there's only twenty of these, so I got number seventeen. So um, hopefully this will increase in value and as as Luke's uh, popularity skyrockets. But Luke, thank you so much. This is awesome. I'll display this with all my other nerdy stuff. So that's the action figure. And then the comic books, it's called Hybrids, the Sons of Gods is the name of his title. So he sent me issue one, which has a cool foil cover. This is called Trash Day um, Part One. And he's with Arrow Comics now, Arrow Comics 4.0. Um, They've got a lot of great looking books coming out. I was on a show with uh, the creator of that, I think almost like a week or so ago on with Comics Madness with Pops. So this is one of Luke's books. I won't take them all out, but I just want to show you the covers. Uh, that's book one. Okay. So then he's, oh, this one, I might have to take this one out because you can't, oh, you can kind of see it. It's black. Oh, that's cool. If you look at it just kind of in the daylight, it looks completely black. But when you hold it up in the light, you can kind of see the image of his character. And it looks kind of like a cyber, you know, a cyber black. Um, and then on the back, he's got his his cool swags. So I have to take the swag out. I know you guys like this. Luke's pro products are pretty reasonably priced. Um, He's still in demand, I think, on Indiegogo for hybrids, so you could you could check that out. But um, I know that Red Valkyrie is a huge fan of patches, so you can see I'm on a green screen because whenever I hold up something that's green, it goes it looks like it's see through. But this is a really cool patch. I don't know what I would sew this on, but um, 
it's super cute. That's one of his characters. And then he's got a cool trading card of Lua Pele, one of the characters in the book. And so that's some of the cool stuff you get. And then one of the things that his that I thought made hybrids very unique is that he's got a role-playing game that comes with it. So this is like probably a, a board game that you can you can um, read and you know folds out with a map maybe and you play. I'm not a big uh, board game playing fan. I'm more of a video game fan, but I know there's a lot of collectors out there that like to play these games. So um, yeah, this is a player's guide to his game. Um, so it looks like a little bit like, you know, kind of like a D&D &D type of scenario. So Luke, very cool, dude. I, I appreciate the the fulfillment. He's a he's a veteran of crowdfunding, and I totally think uh, he's worthy of supporting and a super nice guy. So Luke, thank you for your books. They all came great. Thank you for the Trash Man action figure. I love it. All right, so what do we got next, guys? So um, when I first saw this next creator on on Indiegogo and just in the chats, uh, it, it's it's a book called Star Circuit, and the creator is Joe Catapano. And Joe is well. What really drew me to his his book was that it was um, like Tron, and I'm a big Tron fan from the you know '80s, the original Jeff Bridges one. The remake to me was just you know it was okay. But the original Tron, when you're in high school and you have not seen anything like CG before in your life, it was it was pretty cool. I saw Tron quite a few times. I played the video game a lot. And um, in Star Circuit, if you watch the trailer that Joe did, it, it's very uh, uh, manga, you know, kind of Akira inspired. But it has a lot of these cycles that look a lot like the life cycles in Tron. So I went ahead and backed um, Star Circuit, the comic book, and I think it's still in demand. Joe will have to correct me if I'm wrong. But the comic book isn't out yet. He's, I think he's going to press with it. But he did have a perk that he added to the campaign, and it was the, um, the 3D printed cycle. So he only made... I don't know, I think maybe 50 or so of these or something like that. This is the first edition 3D print. Um, it, it, I think he told me I was the furthest customer that he sent these to. And because I'm in California, he's in Florida. So he, he was a, a little antsy, hoping that it would make it to me in, in, in good condition, which I think it did. He said one of them broke. So I'm hoping that mine, mine did not suffer that fate. So here we go, guys. This is a this is a three D cycle, and I'm gonna take take it out very carefully. Okay. Wow, that's cool. So it's still got it's still got it's kind of like little padding in here, which I'll take out real carefully. So this is the star cycle 3d print and it's uh it's intentionally left unpainted so you can i think joe kind of wants to have a contest like whoever paints it the coolest is going to get maybe some other perk but check this out this is i think this is only like maybe 40 or 50 dollars um it's his name of his studio is Vera Via Studios, which is Italian. If you guys are Italian out there, you know what Vera Via means. You can feel free to let me know. Heronberg probably knows what Vera Via is. Heronberg is very smart. He knows a lot of stuff. So anyways, guys, this is really cool. I don't know if I have the skills to paint this in a way that would do it justice. I might have to find... Um, somebody that's a cool model painter um, maybe after the book comes out so I can be you know accurate and um, but anyways I don't think I don't know if he still has these available you can go to Indiegogo and, and type in star circuit and see if he still has some of these left but 
I think they were selling fast. I think once people got to see them, he's going to get some um, additional backers on it. But uh, Joe, awesome job. To, I don't even know how. I mean, obviously, you have to have someone sculpt this and then do it. So that's pretty cool. So I got two cool things today, a trash man and a, and a star circuit cycle. So anyways, uh, check out star circuit with Joe. Uh, where are we at, guys? 9-11. I'll try to make this quick because I know we got we got Aaron and, and Frequency Girl in the house. Okay, so I'm doing this in alphabetical order. Um, this The third piece of mail that we got recently was um, from our friend Sean Arendt, who is uh, part of the uh, Art and Stuff show on YouTube. Joe, Joe Sontag, who is in the house. I, I'm sorry, I'm not keeping up with your comments, guys. So... Uh, so anyways, Joe Sontag is a, a, a great dude, and he and Sean co-host a weekly show where they talk about art and stuff, and I've been on their show a few times, and it's really uh, a fun show. So I got to meet these guys, and Sean, um, I think this is his first project. This is kind of like uh, a preview edition of Type 1, and I don't know too much about the story, but I know that I think... Sean has type 1 diabetes, and he's trying to bring awareness to people about it. And he's got a hero that may have to uh, deal with having type 1 diabetes and still being a hero, which I thought was cool <clears throat> to kind of use um, that as a platform to to make the, the comic book series interesting. So um, let me scale back here a little bit so I'm not, I'm not freaking out the green screen. Um, so anyways... When I saw Type 1 and, and Sean kind of pitching it, I said, boy, that guy looks a lot like Zen Intergalactic Ninja because that's kind of the thing that I published in the 90s because he's blue. He's kind of got a shape kind of like an alien face. But then I saw um, Sean just did, probably did like about 100 of these, I think, and they're like $20 each. I had no idea he was going to do this cool foil prismatic cover. And then I saw Mark Poulton open it and I said wow that's super sweet so I got this just in the last week um, if you want to see if Sean still has them I posted the link in the YouTube chat so this is really <laughs> this is so cool growing up in the 90s and doing comics in the 90s you would see a lot of cool foil covers chromium uh, uh, metallic ink you know we did all that stuff with Entity back in the day uh, we had like a J. Lee chromium cover, but uh, this is a black and white interior preview and it looks super cool. He's very um, influenced by Rob Liefeld. And so uh, I won't, I won't, I won't spoil it. You'll, you'll, oh, there is some color in it. So there you go. Now you can kind of see why I thought he kind of looked like Zen. I don't know what his power is. Uh, I'll definitely read it. Joe, do you have some artwork in here? Oh, there is a, a preview of Joe's book called Reaper Destroyer. And that looks totally awesome. Kind of looks like a cross between Spawn and Ragman from DC. I'm sure it will be highly action-packed. And Joe is taking his sweet time drawing it. But look at that. Joe, you are really good, man. <laughs> I got to hire you for something if I'm... I got to think of what kind of project I, I could put you on. But um, so, Sean, congratulations on getting this out. I'm sure it's exciting to see uh, it get into the hands of people. Um, he's got a little thank you note in here for supporting his book. Um, he's got a U.S. assassin trading card that I think he probably drew. That's sweet. Uh, U.S. assassin is actually going to be in our Beard Zerker campaign we're so close guys we're almost done coloring and lettering it we're a little behind but we're we're in the home stretch so hopefully we can get it off to the printer thank you for your patience and he, he even gives us this cool sketch i don't know if this is original or not i don't think this is an original sketch i'll have to ask sean but um it comes with like a blue, on the back of a blue line piece so anyways oh i'm sorry Joe's, Joe's giving me some, some clarification. Okay, so Mark Poulton, wow. 
Mark Poulton, writer, artist extraordinaire, the man that comes out with like a book every month. He drew this card and then Sean inked it. I think I was reading U.S. Assassin and uh, Mark and Sean are pretty close. And I saw that he, Mark named a character in the book, um, Errant or something. And I thought that was cool that you guys were, were kind of, kind of being, being pals in the, in the comic books. All right, guys, last thing before I get into the, our guests, um, this is, oh, this is from Professor Murph, Justin Murphy, and this is uh, War Party. War Party did really great. I think he made like $40,000 on it. It's still going strong. So um, I backed War Party. Uh, this is a great looking book if you like kind of like werewolves and action i think they're all floppy books so they're kind of like the old school um newsprint but with really great covers and stuff uh, looking forward to this that that was pretty smart i think he came out with multiple issues so you don't have to just get one you get like all three of them and you can read the full story so rampart press uh war party this is awesome i know he's got like special edition figures and so forth a little bit of advertising he's got like a motion comic book uh i think he's got original artwork slip cases this guy's like for his first project i think he's really he's really done a great job uh it comes with a a trading card and he signed them so you can kind of see right there thanks murph I'm looking forward to reading these. I am so far behind on reading. I mean, I, I think I've probably backed like 40 or 50 projects and they're all so good. I just want to take my time reading them. So uh, anyways, guys, this is a great looking campaign. I think he even has like Michael Golden doing a variant cover on here, which is, he's like one of my favorite artists from the eighties and nineties. So anyways, that's a war party. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, take down the banner with the coffee and comics mail call because we're done with that. And let me just check the chat before I bring you guys in. Hey, there's Joe Catapano. Are you in the house, Joe? I think you might be. I'm not sure. Eris says you are. So I, I trust you guys are. Um, let's see anything else I'm missing. Um, yeah. Herrenberg says that you can still get the type one ash can online and oh, Joe, you said you did the very back the very back page. Okay, I think I showed that. Okay, so anyways, guys, I'm gonna get into our with our guests. Are you guys ready, Neff and Frequency Girl? Let's bring them on in. There they are. Hey guys. Hey, good morning, Don. Good What's morning. up? How's everything going? I'm doing great. I'm so sorry that I, I kept you guys waiting longer than usual. Are you on a no. schedule? No, no we're good. <laughs> not, okay. not schedule, really. We were, so we're we, we are on our own schedule. Uh, okay, but that's that's fine. We were running behind. So any technical difficulties that you had worked a little bit in our favor because, you know, I actually jumped into the stream a little bit late. Thanks for letting us know that you were going to do the uh, mail call, though, because. Uh, oh, you're welcome. Kept me I, from, I didn't like, expect to get out. some. Yeah, I didn't expect to get so much mail in the last uh in the last week and it just kind of piled in and i always love to share that stuff so well you got um, good stuff man yeah. we're waiting for thank you all of those yeah, <laughs> so I, it's possible some I'm of it watching, might be in our i'm watching everyone unbox theirs and i'm like where's mine <laughs> you know leroy and uh, george just did a review of war party and i'm like but bruh like oh, i can't watch it yet <laughs> uh, where's mine oh you guys are cute I, i'm I know, waiting I for my light cycle i'm waiting for you're, all of it <laughs> you're probably closer to them than yeah. Me, but, but, and you always back early, so you should be getting your stuff. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm a little bit worried, you know? Like, what happened? Does my postal guy hate me all of a sudden because yeah. he got to I mean, bring me all these packages? It's possible the books are here and we haven't opened them yet because we do have a little bit of a pile oh, ourselves. Yeah. But oh, okay. we don't have anything light cycle size, so I know we don't yeah. have that yet. We don't have the light uh, cycle okay. yet, that's for sure. That's cool. But we did, you... we did just open hybrids the other day. Yeah. So. Cool. Are you guys going to... um? When you when you get the light cycle, are either one of you proficient enough to try to paint it? Garrett and I are. 
Yeah, so I can put things together. I we've think. already been coming up with a uh, color palette, uh, an idea to do a diorama, and I have a trick up my sleeve that's totally going to win us the painting competition. <laughs> uh, cool. That's yeah. awesome. So um, how many campaigns have you guys backed? Because I know whenever we started with X-Farce and Beard Zerker, you are very, very gracious and, and uh, supported our books, but... You know, every time I watch a Bancroft screen, you were, you were backing something. Yeah, we, so. we love backing uh, two reasons. One, I think this community of indie creators, especially on Indiegogo, is the bomb. You guys make indie comics exciting. Uh, it's it is so much fun to get to know the creators, to get to hear about the books firsthand, to watch you guys create them, and to like you know hear you market them directly to us. So of course I'm going to back all of that. That's like supporting my friends, you know. Yeah. But uh, also it's research for us too, so that we can learn how to make the best product by examining what's out there in the market. Steel sharpens steel. Right, mm -hmm. So I want to see what everyone is doing and up my game to meet or exceed that because we're all kind of in a, a race together. Uh, right. I was talking to Clint Holinsky last night about it. It's like it's a fun race, you know, because we're all racing together, uh, you know, jockeying for position. It's not like, you know, cutthroat competition. But at the right. same time, everyone just keeps up in the game a little bit more and a little bit more. And yeah. the customers and the backers benefit. So I, I kind of also get to benefit from the, the race because I'm a backer. To date, yeah. we have backed 284 projects. And wow. we don't do the whole, like, just here's a dollar. Like, we get the book. Um, yeah. So we, we have a lot of books. We have a couple of, you know, those plastic long boxes. Some of the stuff that we got doesn't fit in there. So it's kind of sitting on the table. One of these days I might take you for a tour. Uh, but it's such a mess. I'm not really comfortable. Yeah, we've just that. been kind of solely focused on the campaign. So everything else has kind of gone to the yes. side. But, yeah. but it's been a lot of fun opening up everyone's um, books and, and packages when they come in and kind of look at like oh i really like how this one printed i really like the paper feel on this one and then kind of digging around and being like oh they used this printer or they used this vendor and then it kind of helped steer us in Go where do the black we bag over there want to look oh I'm we sorry. get to I mean, see something cool that's um, the stuff that we got at terrificon right oh, okay I'm pretty I was gonna sure that's say, the stuff in the uh, black bag. Bring it, bring it, bring it here. I was going to yeah. say, Aaron. So we were, just, we were just saying, you know, backing stuff, right? Uh, we went to Terrificon, and we saw some people in person at Terrificon. All this right, yeah. This is just what we got from Heroinburg. So we got oh, but the cool thing is all of these the issues. Uh, the cool stuff's in the box of his comic, or their comic. Like the plus this awesome thing. synth core project that they had on their stand. I got an autographed picture from Arctica, <laughs> which is great. She said, warm wishes and cold kisses. It was great to meet them in person, you know? And then I got uh, these, which were also on the table. And then he sent us to his friend who was in the next stall right next door. And we got these. So yeah, we're, we're always, you know, spending our cash on, uh, on everybody and, and uh, supporting projects and checking out what they got going on. It's, it's awesome. you know, part of the fun. That's awesome. Well, let me, I have to just say, you have a really cool, looks like a Ninja Turtles. Is that Ninja Turtles color artwork behind you? Yeah, that's Eric Nowakowski yeah. from Shadow Oh, yeah. that, that is that so. One of the auction. That's one of his metal prints. We have, yeah, we have the, the original, too. original uh, which is in pen and ink. Uh, or it's pencils, pen, and ink. But that's the metal print that he sent with it. And I had to throw that up there because it catches oh. the light just so nicely where it's at. It is sweet. I really like it. I can tell. All right. So um, so I have to say just I was I was blown away by the level of planning and your, your rollout of your campaign. Because um, I remember coming on your show a few months ago the flatting and chatting show and you kind of were showing me stuff work in progress and um you know it looked really impressive and then when you came out with the campaign you just had everything just so strategically planned out and we'll go over that you know i don't know if you want me to share or if you guys want to share your screen you're welcome to do it whatever way you want to, to be feel comfortable but i to me i just thought you 
you really did do what you said. You you soaked in all the best stuff that from the best campaigns and adapted it. You know, you didn't rip people off, but you just, I mean, just all the cool perks that you have, the stretch goals, you, you have them already done. The graphics on your campaign are just like first rate. And the trailer, which I have, why don't we play the trailer? And then you guys sure, will talk about the trailer. it. You all right, it. I, I went ahead and... I went ahead and downloaded it so we don't have any like weird streaming nice. issues. So we're gonna yeah, that's what we we're gonna to. we're gonna watch it, guys. So check it out. War is a topic of vital importance, a subject of inquiry that cannot be ignored. It is a matter of life and death. It can be a road to safety. Or to ruin. In an alternate version of our world, brought to the brink of total collapse, rival nations fight for global domination, and elite pilots in futuristic combat suits wage war on the battlefield of tomorrow. Now, six brave soldiers on a seemingly routine rescue mission will encounter more than they bargained for and uncover a dangerous secret that could change their world if they live long enough to see it. Sweet. Yeah. Wow. That looked like it took a while to put together. It, it did. It took, a, it took a bit. There's a lot of After that. Effects that went into that. Uh, we did actually get an animator to do the last 20 seconds of animation. He was a guy that worked on Grin Lagon, so it was really exciting to talk to him because, you know, it's a, a mecha series that I watched. And I was like, wait a minute, you did? You worked on that? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, whoa. So <laughs> it, was, it was cool talking to that guy. One thing I will suggest to everybody out there, doing a cool trailer is so much fun. Ours is a minute and a half. They're right. Cut yours down to have a 30 second spot trailer and an extended trailer. Because the extended trailer is great. It's a lot of fun. Everyone loves this trailer. But for advertising and to put it on, like if you're doing ads out in the real world or you're going to premiere it on somebody's um, stream with all of the other trailers in the beginning, you're going to need a 30 second spot trailer. So okay. be sure to do that. That's one of my words of wisdom to you guys out there. If you're investing money in a trailer, get two versions. Yeah. I agree. So, I agree. So someone asked yes. me, I think it is your voice, right? It yes. is. Yeah. Yep, that's me. I do the female voiceover in the beginning and then the whisper at the end is me. Yeah. I figured that was the case. So awesome. That's so awesome. Who was like the voiceover that kind of sounded like the Hollywood trailer like the guy? Mr. Movie Fun? We, we got a guy off of Fiverr. Um, there are a lot of voice actors out there. Arya Blackness yes. uses a really good one. Joe Cotapano has a fantastic one in his trailer. And it just feels necessary to have one of those um, very <laughs> sophisticated and regal voices, very dramatic voices in there. So we went and we found one guy that we particularly like, but uh, I'm, I'm sure that there's, uh, there's others out there too. Cool. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I've used... Uh... Two voice actors, one that was the Patrick Stewart and then one that was the Keanu Reeves. Right. From, uh, the Keanu Reeves one in yours yeah. is remarkable. Yeah, it is so awesome. good. I've watched your trailer so many times. I remember seeing it the first time on my phone. I was like, Garrett, look at this. Look. And the parody was so perfect. Yeah. Thanks, you know, guys. I appreciate that. You're, you're, you're sweet. And books. I mean, <laughs> comic books. It's, it's, so, it's good. so It's so fun just, you know, because yeah. you guys wrote the script, I'm sure, for your trailer. And then when you yep. when you parse it out and you give it to these people to do the voiceovers, they usually turn around pretty quickly. So it's cool to oh, send yeah. them the script and then they send you the audio file and you listen to it and you just like go, this is so fun to breathe life, professional, you know, voice actors and animators and stuff into the mix and it just makes 
it, it's just like you know directing a movie i think you know in a short in a short format. absolutely we actually did the storyboard too for the animation so we broke it down into image shots and then transitions. So the guy that we work with, the animator who we work with, had a blueprint of how to do it. Yeah. So there was no like debating and this and that, which means that the the music composition that I put together was well articulated to the choreography for the ending animation. So all of the audio in there is me. Um, all of the animation is that guy. And then all of the frames and cutting and stuff in After Effects is me and my partner, Brian, yeah, over at Media Benders. And we put that together. So yeah, there was a lot of moving parts to the trailer, but it was... It all came together. It was a labor of love and it was a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. yeah. And of was course, your animator your voice lines. Yeah. Was your animator a local, local no, person? Or did... not at all. No. He's Israeli, I think, right? Uh, wow. No. Uh, I thought he was Israeli. No. Uh, Argentina or Argentina? Brazil? Oh, I, I don't, wow, I don't know really. I remember. That's cool. He had, he had a great, a great yeah. accent. Yes. Um, but yeah, the the trailer was definitely uh, a lot of fun to put together. So okay. in the private chat, we yes. dropped a link for you. Would you okay. mind pinning that for us? Yes. Let me uh, pinning that in my uh, on the YouTube channel, or just yeah. putting it yeah. in the. Okay. You can put it in and then Heroinberg or another mod can like use it to repost or you can just pin it to the top so that it's okay, active yeah. there and people can can click on that sure. because Let we have a special sure. surprise for you today. Okay. Let me figure I think I know how to oh. pin this. Um oh, let me see. I don't know if I can do it on the fly. I'm not that well versed on this, but let me go ahead and paste it in the chat cuz that yeah. should that should help and then Heroinberg I think you can share the link um yeah forgive me i'm kind of i i kind of oh, had no to do it yeah i think will that work hopefully that will work yeah. okay so um should i go to the should i go to that link or do you want to share it uh we'll we'll take care of it why don't okay. you just add my screen though because right, what i'm about go, to show you guys is classified intel from our campaign this is a photo uh, that was recently obtained by our overt <laughs> surveillance sources of Jester and Don Chin pulling off what? Operation Funny Face, oh which my was God. to go and to get this. <laughs> to go and and deface one of their fellow pilots, Mavs. This is this is the Mav known as Bigfoot, and uh, it was it was Don's idea to go paint a big beard. For for beard zerker on this <laughs> Tremblay is Tremblay is very outraged, but Don is having a great time, and you know the evidence is right there that that he's the one behind it oh with the black paint gosh. and the brush. And if you look super close, super <laughs> oh close, my gosh, what do you see? What do you oh see man. in that pocket there? I might yeah, have to buy this artwork if it's if it's available. <laughs> so the digital? artwork was done digital. The artwork oh. was done digitally. But the print is currently available on the campaign. If you use that secret link, it's for free. Oh. And it'll be available using that link for 24 hours, included in the base tier or the upgrade tier to the spare magazine. And if you got oh the campaign gosh. box, guys, of course, this print will be yep. included in the campaign box regardless of when you back. That um, is hilarious. There's more classified intel to come, but I was really, really this excited to share this one. I've been yeah. sitting on it for such a long time. I, I, I wanted to show you, but I couldn't show you. Be like, <laughs> Look what we did! Okay, Ray, um, Ray Griffith. Yeah, Ray Griffith did this from did Funny Things. Yeah. Wow. He's just a great character yeah. artist. I am, I am actually blushing. Yeah, tales? astounding tales. Uh, astounding I'm blushing. Tales. Yeah. I'm blushing. I'm glad, this is like... man. I'm glad because, like I said, it's it's a campaign for you guys. You know, yes. like, we're putting out a book. Obviously, the book is going to become a series of graphic novels. It's going to go and and become its own thing. But for our first campaign, we really wanted to pay homage to the people Aww. who helped us get here. Yeah. So there are other classified prints out there. Um, there's, a, there's a list of the ones that have been revealed. But this one, dude, I, I love it. I love the expression. Uh. I love the, the exaggerated caricature art. I love how angry Tremblay is. At the oh, fact that he looks so cute with a beard. <laughs> yeah, he does. He looks great with a beard. <laughs> he does right? look I mean, cute. I don't know if he wore it as well as I did when yeah. we were on our show, but the fake you know. face reveal. <laughs> yeah, it was great. The first time uh, she did her face reveal. So, how long is this available? 
This will be available for 24 hours all the way to the end of the day tomorrow. So not okay. exactly 24 hours, more like 32 hours yeah. or something. I'll get but the we'll word out. to the end of day tomorrow. Yeah. And like I'll I said, 20 it. bucks for the basic tier will get you this print included in that basic tier at no extra charge. But in my personal opinion, just snag the campaign box because there are 10 secret prints in total. Yeah. And, and they're all really good. They're all, they're all up here, up there, especially with the lore that's included. That's what I back. Yeah, so I'm we guaranteed to get this. Yeah. Well, You're guaranteed. Are the prints, guaranteed. Are they signed or by you or if you they want? Are, or? I will sign them if you want. Honestly, the greatest part about crowdfunding uh, especially crowdfunding with a first campaign where, you know, you're not getting thousands upon thousands of backings. You're getting like, you know, a couple hundred backers. The best part is that you can communicate with them one on one and they can tell you what they want. Yeah. I know uh, it might be Eric McIntyre. I might be wrong. It might be Jim Cox or Eric McIntyre. can't remember. It's one of the two. Isn't crazy about all the stuff that comes, you know, with the stretch goals. So I was like, hey, if you, if you don't want it, message me and I'll just keep it out of the box because you can tell me what you want. And right. that's really what I'm leaning into with the crowdfunding part. It's like we're, we're making it come to life together. So yes. there, we'll sign it if you want. There's also lore that we're going to type up, a lore transmission. Like the, the secret intel behind this is why this is funny. You know, like you're blushing because it captures different parts of what really happened. You know, the lore, like you did Beard Zerker, the <laughs> hamster is in your pocket. There is a whole context to it. And there are people out there who probably don't know it. Most of the people who are going to back this do know it because, like I said, it's a campaign for you guys. But there are some people out there who won't. So they might need, you know, a little encrypted message in there about what's going on in this photo. Yeah, it's awesome. You'll have to send me. Can you send me the image uh, oh, yeah. separately yeah, absolutely. on, like, oh, yeah. you know, message me on Twitter, and that way I could I could share it along with the link. Now, who is yeah, the yeah, gentleman yeah. with the red hair? Is that Garrett? So that's one of our pilots. Oh, uh, okay. his name his name is Jester. He's got a really good sense of humor. He's kind of like the the mirth and the heart of the team. He tells the jokes, he cuts the tension because you know, a big part of of good writing is oscillating uh, fear and comedy, you know, and that creates dramatic tension going between these these two extremes and building them up. So Jester really is the counterpoint to a lot of the serious and scary stuff that happens because gotcha. he's able to do the witty banter and, you know, he's kind of yeah. like Spider-Man in that sense, imagine, like he's got the, the snappy pattern. So I figured I, I, you, you two would make a great team. The two That's cool. I think I heard that, I mean, I just from your your various pitches this is a big book right it's oversized and it's got a lot of pages so you you yeah. can really tell a big story right so this yeah. is this is a regular comic book this is hybrids that's you know just happens to be on my table so i grabbed it right right this is a proof of the com the digital comic that's on the campaign it's currently our teaser comic our promo comic okay this is the size difference so cool. this is a big book. It is nine by 12 oversized. And if you wanted to compare that to a book out there, it would be like this, like Gypsy. And mm. I mean, we can actually show ours. You get really close to the art in this. Yeah. You can wow. get your nose up in that city and see the detail. Yeah. And um, Garrett uses a lot of detail in his art, especially in like the ruins of Ulan Batar. Um, there's a lot of really great detail in there that I feel like you would miss in a smaller scale. Um, I feel yeah. Like this kind of really... You definitely miss it on the internet because yeah. <laughs> the screens are already smaller than right. the book. Yeah, right. I feel like this Garrett's art style kind of lends itself to that yeah. oversight. It almost, it's almost kind of like, you know, you guys probably were have been collecting for a while. But back in like the seventies, there were like the treasury size editions that Marvel would come out with. It's not quite quite as big as that, but it's it's much more grandiose than your your standard comic yeah. book. Um, so how how much of the book is done? Are you do you have it we're, all done? We're at the point in the book where we are into the final fight sequence which is just, I'd say it's about a quarter of the book, about 15 pages of pure action. Because cool. we give you uh, some setup, 
We give you some tension. We don't ever drop exposition on you, but there is world building into this conflict that occurs. Conversations while people are getting ready, stuff that happens in the dropship while they're flying to the landing zone, a mission briefing, that kind of stuff. The pilots joking around. Um, and all of that builds up to when they drop into the city. Uh, we did. We have the drop covered. We have when they meet up with the refugees cover, and we have where they encounter the antagonist. But from that point, once they encounter the antagonist, it's knockdown, drag out action. We wanted to give you just an insanely fun fight, and in order to do that, Garrett has transitioned from doing. Uh, I know Mo Biggs. If Mo Biggs was here, yeah, he would, he would, he would, he would, every time I use the word transition, he like he's like, oh, Garrett transitioned. Okay, yeah. um, he's he's decided to move from doing work digitally on his tablet to doing actual physical medium. Um, giant pages because yeah. like i said we're oversized so it's not by 11 by something? 17 it's I don't remember it's the... much bigger than that and he's got a big easel that he's working wow. that aspect ratio. and he has to, yeah we have to keep the aspect ratio in order for it to be uh printable at that at that scale but uh he needs to see the whole page he needs to be able to bring his hand across the whole page like that. And he needs to get into the into the uh, drawing to really like bring out the details in the background. So, like that's also why he's not on the show right now. It's because he's sitting behind an easel that's bigger than he is. Oh wow! Um, now, so we've got um, everything except for that part of the book, and that part of the book will get drawn out, uh, scanned in. Garrett will do the base color. He'll do the flatting and the base colors, and then we're going to send it to a coloring finisher who okay. puts on like the effects detailing. They check the contrast levels. They do the any CMYK, highlighting that's so necessary. That's, that's the big part. Yeah, the big, is the CMYK yeah. checks is like sure. it's kind of arduous and takes time. So yeah, usually when you bring it into something like uh, Clip Studio, which is what Garrett uses, unless you're creating files in CMYK, you're going to be in RGB. And people love RGB because it has you know the color options and hues that don't really exist when you're using CMYK. It's uh, it's additive color, not substantive for subtractive color. Yeah, I don't I know. Jeremy Zay could explain it to you really well. So could Joe Catapano. Both okay. of them really have a good knowledge of it. But um, the, the issue is once you scan that in with all of the layers that are done in the coloring, you have to export that, then import that into Photoshop, check the CMYK, and if it needs to be corrected, you have to go back to the original file and then check it again. Again. So it's just this labor-intensive, arduous process that I do not need my artist doing. Sure. I need my artist making art. <laughs> so yeah. I need a colorist, a specialty colorist, to be doing that. So we hired yet another, yet another person involved in doing the colors. And maybe we should put their name on the book, probably, right? We yeah. should just set them in as a secondary colorist. Yeah, I think so, the, yeah. The... We'll what's probably your, um, the credits. What's your anticipated uh, ship date? We want to get this to you guys by Christmas. Awesome. I want this to be a Christmas present uh, for you, for someone that you know, uh, something worth sharing with others. That's why I made the campaign box at 150 and got it down as low as I could and yeah. then made the merch tier 45 so that you could okay. get everything on the campaign for under $200. Because when I was talking to the chat, specifically Amanda B, I said, how much are you willing to spend? Like, what is the highest thing that you'd be willing to go on? And she said, $200. We cannot go above that. And I said, well, then yeah. I will make sure you can get absolutely everything we have to offer for 200 bucks. That's uh, nice. Of, of course, shipping is is a factor. Yeah. Um, so yeah. We but, did our best there, too. But, but we have domestic shipping down to $10 for the merch tier and $15 for the campaign box. The campaign box is 10 by 13. So it's bigger than the book, obviously. That's it's very reasonable. It's three and a half inches thick, and it weighs over eight pounds. Or just about wow. eight pounds. Yeah. So this is a page, <laughs> package you could beat someone to death with. <laughs> and, and we got it down to about $15 shipping. So the two of them together come out to be two twenty. dollars uh, of course, before taxes, but right? That's you know that's I know it's a little bit pricey for a Christmas gift in in a lot of ways, but like this goes a real real distance when you add in all of sure. the stretch goals on top yeah. of everything. There is yeah. so much stuff in those two boxes. Can, if you can want, you, we can share um, the campaign page. Yeah, let's look at let's spend spend some time let, letting us see the awesome the awesome stuff besides my uh, my mug Absolutely. on your print. <laughs> oh man, I love that mug though. He did such a good job. 
You really did. All right, I'm going here. I'm going to share, share screen. Uh, so, so you guys are in a 30 day campaign, right? Are you gonna uh, go another 30 after this? Yeah, or yeah we're sure? gonna extend. Yeah, we're gonna extend, and then we do have a Kickstarter campaign planned, and I think that launches the last week that the Indiegogo is active. Mm-hmm. And it overlaps by like 10 days, I maybe think. 10 days. Um, but we're doing that because there are a lot of people that do back on Kickstarter that for some reason don't like Indiegogo. Um, but right. they do want to be able to back the book. And so we're going to give them the option to to do all of that. But none of the classified intel will be available on the Kickstarter at all. And it'll have different covers. It'll have different. Yeah, there are all of the variant covers are different. I think we're keeping Garrett's main cover. Yeah. We were talking about doing a different main cover. I'm not sure if we will or not. We're kind of still undecided. We'd love some feedback from you guys about that. Should we do a different base cover? for the Kickstarter campaign, or should we keep the same base cover? Because we have five variants on this campaign, we do have five variants for that campaign that are totally different. But the big thing for me was like, well, we want the special lore, you know, Indiegogo family stuff to stay on Indiegogo. We don't want it going to Kickstarter because they don't know anything about it. And honestly- It's a special Indiegogo. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, they don't love it the way we do. Um, Right. So this is the campaign, as you can see right now, Operation Funny Face is currently active as a secret perk. And then the <laughs> featured the featured tier is the fully loaded campaign box. Um, the pitch is pretty much covered in the trailer, so I feel like I could skip that at this point. It's, you know, a squad goes in on a routine mission to rescue some refugees and they encounter something they're not ready to deal with. And then they have to fight for their life. Uh, in Big Stompy Robots. In Big Stompy Robots. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I liked when I saw Jose Garcia's page for Lumina Vox. He gave like a list of genres and other IP that his series was like. And it really let me get a feel for, oh, this is going to be cool because he drew inspiration from this and from this. Uh-huh. And those things helped cook up his story so i i loved that so i wanted to do my own so here you can see a bunch of the different um you know properties yeah. ips and influences that we have on this campaign there's a bunch of video games uh, all mecha video games yeah there's a bunch i played of titanfall and fun. stuff yeah titanfall was a was a big influence on it because of like the proportion of the mechs you know like our mechs are roughly 30 feet Ish, you know, so they're like three between three and four stories tall. They're not like giant robots, yeah, they're not, but they're also like, not little power armored suits. Right. Um, so you know the 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 element of the the pilots interacting with the robots from Titanfall, you know, that just definitely felt like inspiring. While I was playing these games, a lot of what was going on for Mavericks was cooking in the back of my mind. Then you've got, of course, stuff like GI Joe. And uh, and Zero Dark Thirty and Extraction, those are all like, you know, team style uh, properties. One in the, the movies is more military thriller-esque, but in G.I. Joe, it's definitely about a group of specialists in the military taking on threats, in, in the case of G.I. Joe, Cobra. Um, so I, I also want to stress the fact that this is a team book, not a superhero team. It's a team of mecha pilots, but they all have the roles that they play, their combat roles and their roles on the team. And it's also very much steeped in the feel of a military thriller. Our editor actually likens it to Predator. Uh, so just like there's a team okay. of guys in the jungle with Arnold Schwarzenegger, one is the scout, one has got the heavy weapons, there's Dutch, there's Arnold. Everyone kind of has an established role and they have to take on this mystery monster that they're dealing with. Um, we try to capture that element of thriller in the book, which is why I said Jester's so important. He cuts the tension. He makes jokes. He has funny observations. And it kind of brings a little bit of levity to a situation that might be, you know, more serious. Um, Below that, you can see the perks. We've got the main cover, which is Garrett's Akira homage cover. 
That's mother walking to her Mav the way Kaneda walks to his motorcycle in Akira. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, the main cover is just kind of like displayed for the digital download because that's really the only thing that's on there. Although we did add a digital add on for this digital download of the Ashcan anthology. And it's the only way to get the digital download of the Ashcan anthology. If you want the Ashcan anthology, you're going to have to back it physically unless you're going to get the all digital tier in which case you know it it is an add on i think it's a $5 yeah add-on? we were originally we weren't thinking of offering it digitally but then but we had someone, someone pointed request. it out hey we can only get digital you know the reason we did digital was for overseas backers who don't want to deal with the shipping and i totally understand gotcha. that i don't like digital yeah. comics because they're no fun and this <laughs> thing is 9 by 12 yeah, for a I reason know. you know like that's not going to translate in digital it's it's oversized yeah. for a reason, so it's kind of like I feel the digital does a disservice to this book in a way. But I want people to be able to have the story, and they they pointed out, I was like, hey, we can't get the the ash can. I was like, oh, we'll we'll fix that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. once again, guys, give us feedback. We'll we'll, we'll change do stuff. our best to, to make it. Then there's what the you basics want. tier. The basics is twenty dollars. Um, it comes with the main cover, a copy of the book, uh, the digital version. It also comes with a print by Mike McMahon, which is a a puzzle print the other half oh, wow. of this print will be available on the kickstarter campaign so that if you want to back over there and you want to get something like a variant cover you'll be getting an additional print that isn't this print you know right. it'll go together it feels like you're not oh, cool. just getting a, yeah. you're not getting gypped they are complete in and of themselves right. but when you put them together it, it makes a, we, a larger yeah uh, like a mosaic yeah we had to work with mike very specifically on like where to break it but we were already experienced at doing that because we did a double-sided cover with pal Rodericks, which right. we'll show you later and that of course there's a uh eighth of an inch margin that we had to account for the fold over of the spine of the book. So like measuring down. how much of the image to use and like where to break things, you know, it's part of the the craft. And there you can see the the little saucy bookmark that we threw in because, you know, everyone loves a little <laughs> bit of AAT on the campaign. We're taking our cues from guys like Clint Olinsky out there who uh, who are definitely showing off the uh, the goods. Same thing with Heroinberg. I mean, uh, his his super heroines are awesome, but, you know, they're also sexy ladies, and there's absolutely nothing with being a strong, sexy lady. Then we got these spare magazines. The spare magazines are the variant covers that we have on the campaign. Um, first, we have the Preston Acevedo cover. Then for B, we have the Joe Ball cover. With colors by Marcus Martin. Uh, C, we have Joe Cotapano's cover, which is currently the most popular on the campaign. Uh, Joe's there. Uh, yeah, he said. D, Joe is Joe is happy. D, we've got Rob Willis colored by Matt Yaki. Oh my and, god. Uh, e is the Shelby Robertson cover covered by Shelby, and then this is the Active Duty Ashcan Anthology, which is the companion book of short stories and side missions that kind of flesh out the world a little bit more and give you kind of a deeper appreciation for the context of what's going on. And it's right now three stories, uh, which uh, include guest writers and guest artists. So Garrett's not doing the Ashcan anthology. I do have a story in there. Uh, I can tell you who's doing it. We've got um, a story that Joe Cotapano and I are working on together. We've got oh. one that Travis Gibb did with uh, one his of artist. his artists. And uh, Kimasabe, Lee Byron Carver, he wrote one that I worked on with him as the editor, and that's being drawn by John Dillard from The Buckler. Oh, cool. Because the Buckler, awesome. I really like his like his more yeah. realistic style. Like Our stuff yeah. can be a little cartoony. you know, It can be a little bit comic booky, But his stuff has uh, uh, got a gritty realism to it. So the story that we worked on uh, that Kimasabe wrote really has uh, a wonderful grounded feel of like the, the drama that can be experienced in a more, um, I don't know, viscerally realistic way. So I thought that was a mm. great pairing of artists. And all of them relate to what is happening in the main book they add to it or give you some background or side information so yeah nothing's not just a throwaway like, yeah. yeah nothing's a throwaway so the nice. spare magazine which is you know a variant cover will come with one of these five by seven metal prints as well as everything that's included in the basics um it'll also come with the active duty ash can anthology so you actually get the extra book with the extra magazine 
So you get the wow. main cover, a variant cover, the prints, the bookmark, the digital, and you get the Ashcan Anthology. Because the chat said what they really want out of a backup magazine or a spare magazine is another book. So we listened gotcha. to that. And that's only 50 bucks. So we kind of priced the variant covers the same as the main book, $20, and the Ashcan Anthology is $10. So you're getting the metal print for free, you know? And wow. the metal print will be provided by Phoenix Animation, the CG metal smith, because somebody has to keep him employed. <laughs> and so, we so, get... Yep. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, to me, I, on the very first day you guys launched, I got the, the fully loaded campaign box. This is that, what you need. That, that just sounds like the best deal so folks if you can afford this please please go out and back aaron and frequency girls uh look this is a wonderful looking campaign i saw that heron bird said said is it kind of like shogun warriors <laughs> that's, good. that's how old he is um i was gonna say robot jocks Dude. that's that's how old I yeah, am. <laughs> robot that has a feel of it in there. Ask ask Joe Catapano whether or not whether or not it's it's Shogun Warriors. It's not actually. <laughs> it's uh, it's it doesn't have that much of uh, Eastern influence in it. There is definitely okay. more Western military influence, but the fun of the big stompy robots is yeah. there. That's what I love. I love Mecha and Mecha anime and just giant robots in general. I think they're so cool. You know, very so cool. I wanted to bring of all of that to the campaign. Do I have time to tell you guys about the fully loaded campaign box and the merch tier? Yeah, I was going to say, um, I don't know if you watch Amazon prime, but there's a thing called, uh, a guy named Richard may, and he does a tour of Japan. He's one of the, I think he's one of the top gear hosts. He's an older guy, but he goes to Japan. And in the second episode of his series, it's like, um, it's like his tour of Japan. You just look up Richard may, Japan. Did he go to Amazon. Odaiba and show everyone the Gundam? I think he did. It's there's this nice. huge robot in a warehouse, yeah. and he and he fights his translator. She's like in a little oh, the neck. One. Yeah. And he yeah, this one walks and it shoots yeah. like so that's the one that wasn't there when we were. It shoots balls and and foam balls. Oh, you're talking people. about Kuratas. Yeah, Kuratas, the uh, the Japanese mech. There's an actual pilot that goes inside. She's a really cute girl, and she drives it around. It shoots airsoft BBs. I think I know. Yeah, it, it was about. huge. Yeah. Though. I mean, it was so big it couldn't get out of the warehouse it was in. But <laughs> anyways, if you guys watch that, it's a real life huge mecha, mecha. robot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they've got the Unicorn Gundam on Odaiba Island, uh, which is, uh, you can see it in the background of the Olympics. We actually went to Japan prior to doing oh, this nice. book. Yeah. And I ran nice. around Japan and had a really good time looking yeah, at the stuff out there. <laughs> I couldn't leave him alone in the airport because I was afraid he wouldn't get on the plane to come back home. <laughs> this close, oh, that's This fun. close to just bolting out of the, yeah. So okay, the campaign sure. box, it's got... Yeah, show yeah. us the th- campaign box. So this this is basically, it's got it all, man. It's got all five variant covers and all five of the metal prints. It's got the basics. It's got the Ashcane Anthology. It's got that sweet collector's box because you were going to want something to put all of this stuff in. One of the problems with some campaigns out there is, you know, with all of the additional stretch goals, the patches, the pins, the stickers and everything, it has a tendency to like, you know, get crowded or go into a drawer or just kind of like, you know, get lost. So we wanted to provide you a way to, to store all of that stuff. And then you got this unique double-sided Pal Roderick's cover uh, colored by Carlos, Carlos Moreno. Moreno. And it's a X-Men homage. On the front, mm. you got Ripper, like Cyclops with the big big gun. And then you got a uh, hot shot, like Wolverine, dual wielding. And you got the other guys, you know, kind of off into the into the background there. Um, wow. But it's a double-sided cover, and it's chromium. So it's going to be shiny like uh, like this one that we got from like hybrids. Yeah. You know, like the one that you were looking at before. But the, the real treat in the campaign box um, is this dog tag. And this dog tag is special because not only is it something you can wear as a reminder of the campaign, but that dog tag on one side says Mavericks, on the other it has a QR code that you can scan. And that QR code will take you to a pilot registry database on our website. Nice. And when you get your campaign box, once we go into fulfillment, we're going to contact you and you get to use your backer number as your 
pilot number and you get to create a customizable pilot profile picking oh. your call sign and the color of your mav and the make and model of your mav and maybe some weapon systems if they're available and we will be putting you into a registry of pilots for the different nations that are currently at war in this book uh, wow. so you'll be immortalized on that I want I want I want to lay dibs on the on the on the mech with the beard Oh yeah, dude, <laughs> that's it. fine, man. You can one hundred percent have that. Uh, absolutely. So that's our way of saying thank you to the people who want everything that Mavericks has to offer. But it's also our like, you know, thank you in the book kind of thing. But a little and, bit cooler. And I bought the domain. Uh, Mavericks.com is is now a domain in use, and we're currently developing. Well, it's not the in website. use yet because we haven't made. You the can't website. buy it. We bought. It. <laughs> yes, okay. it belongs to us. Dot coms are not cheap, guys. So this isn't like a website that's just going to go up temporarily. This is going to be the home of Mavericks for the Moving future. Forward. So you're going to be on, the, and there's going to be probably one of these for every book, for every chapter that we have. There will be a new. Uh, new recruits or newly enlisted pilots every time we do one of these books. We want to just immortalize the people that help us bring it to life. Um, you can see the kind of profiles that you're going to get right here in the pilot profiles for the squad in this book. So if you're a Norca pilot, you're going to get it on the Northern wow. Continental Alliance letterhead. That is sweet. You're going to get, That's so you're gonna cool. get a picture. You'll probably be wearing a helmet so that you know it's a little bit easier to do your facial features that way. You'll get your name, call sign, the model of Mav, pick the color scheme, weapon systems, that kind of stuff. And uh, you know, we'll just we'll we'll keep you in our thoughts that way. That's so then, cool, guys. Wow. Love it. Um then, Yep. Yeah. Let's go ahead Real quick, can I do the stretch goals that we have on Yes, line? yes. There's so much on this You're campaign, fine. man. I have to blow through is. this. It's like so every every thousand dollars because I wanted to do like you know a mix of backer number and money, but the money you know the the financial stretch goals seem to be a little bit more um, predictable. Yeah. So every thousand dollars on this campaign, all the way to twenty thousand, you will get a stretch goal. So our original goal was five hundred. So at one k, you get this sweet print by Luke Stone, who did hybrids, yeah. colored by Ichthys. Mm -hmm. Uh, at 2K, you get six battle stand. Well, you get seven, seven battle standees. You get the Storm Squad, which is six pilots, and then you get the antagonist, uh, Chernabog, and he's the seventh. And these are double sided cool. acrylic battle standees that you can position around however you want to make like a battle scene. They're about two inches tall, they're cute. Um, they're the same kind of, of battle standee that you'll see other campaigns have, like yep. Battle Maiden, Knuckle Bomb, and Common America. Both had standees on their campaigns, which are, are fantastic. The physical proofs are in production, so as soon as we get them in our hands, we'll show you guys what they look okay. like. Unfortunately, because all of these are physical, uh, you have to back a physical tier in order to get them. Yeah. So then we have a print by Elliot Rodriguez colored by Matt Yaki which is really great it captures Jester's humor he's taking a selfie uh, <laughs> using his using his drones cuz he controls all of the uh surveillance I get it drones now. oh that's cool he's taking a selfie while his friends fight for their life in the background <laughs> Um, and all of the prints are A4 size, which yeah. uh, will be easy for boxing and, and chipping because they're just slightly smaller than the comic book. So everything will be protected. You don't have to worry about something being rolled up or shipped separately in a tube, adding to extra shipping. It'll all come protected and, and, and safe. And it all fits Beautiful. in common size frames. Yeah. That's the other thing that we wanted to make sure that like, oh, it would be easy to get a frame for these things. Sometimes, you know, like framing an 11 by 17 can be a little bit difficult because you know you have to find a wall space for it and a frame that's large enough but these are all common size so you can just buy a, a dozen picture frames and they'll fit right then we did at 4k patches for shay because she loves patches <laughs> um at 5k we got a print by zevius called fifth street once again it's jester uh, being Ooh. Jester, and he's got his drones, and in the background they have little, you can't quite see it here, but they have little frowny faces painted on them because they're Ooh. angry little drones. It's funny That's how cool. many of the artists picked Jester. Jester. Because, I mean, he is the he's kind of the of heart and the yeah. levity of the squad. Then at 6K we got a magnet. All of these are unlocked so far, so wow. all of this is coming okay. for you guys. We actually have the physical proofs of these, and they're just upstairs, so yeah. uh, otherwise wow. we'll show it. I mean, it's roughly stuff. exactly what yeah. it looks like right now. Yeah. I mean, so like two if, sides. if you're if you're on a limited budget what what would what would be the minimum amount that you could 
invest to get what you're showing us at this point right now? The basics tier. Get the basics. $20. 20 I think it's, wow. I think it's plus shipping. Shipping is depending upon where you are, but you get all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, and the shipping is flat because we calculated it using the system where we have a weight bracket and we weighed wow. all of this all to make sure package? that even with everything unlocked, we didn't go over the weight maximum. And even if we did, guys, we would pick up the difference because we're not going to come back at you and go, oh, I'm sorry, shipping became more expensive. That's just not cool. Yeah, um, we, we did our very best. But international is a little bit more difficult. Um because once you get over two pounds, uh, the shipping really goes up. But everything with the stretch goals here um, should make it under uh, yeah. two pounds. Yeah. So. Then you get 14 chibi stickers. Not one, not wow. two. 14. You yeah. get all six pilots for Norca, all of their Mavs, and you get Kurito, the pilot of Chernabog, as well as Chernabog. And these are all done by Chibi Selena. Then you get a saucy print by Mike McMahon uh, with Mother washing her Mav and Jester in the background <laughs> kind of look, looking on, uh, you know, with with love-struck forlorn eyes. I have to update the graphic because we, we just, just got, got the, the colors, colors in back from, from Mav. Yeah, okay. To put them in. Then Very we get cool. a pin because pins are possible to ship. You yes. just need to be aware of yeah. how. I've Holy got no smokes. less than nine campaigns out of the 284 that we've backed. Nine of them have shipped pins and there have been no damages whatsoever. So, um, And this is a one and a quarter inch silver plated White hard enamel, enamel yeah. with print on it. So the that is so sweet. Is printed. And then we got the just at 11K unlocked Thunderstruck, which is a crossover print with Brian Shears. So as you can see, it goes like merchandise, then print, merch, print, merch, print oh, okay. all the way through. And okay. as you can tell, like these these prints also in and of themselves are a little bit like lore. You know, like Gunship Thunder Punch, y'all know the campaign, right? Same thing with Scott Payne's Chaotic Flux. You know the campaign. These are things that we, you know, crossed over with deliberately because they're members of this uh, Indiegogo community that we're all a part yes. of. And we're just five hundred dollars away from unlocking another pin and it yeah. looks really cool it's but guys we got to get there there are all these cool things i'm not going to go through wow them. we got to get we got to get here we got to get to 20 character okay we got to get the secret character because you get his standy to add to the battle standees you get cool. a sticker to add to the pre-launch sticker because if you were on the the mailing list if you signed up to the mailing list you got a really sick five inch vinyl sticker with like a special holographic effect on it. Oh, so you'll get I his think sticker. I was on that. Yeah. 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 You're going to get nice. it. Um, and you get his uh, special trading cards because one of the early tiers, I think it's 16 K you get the entire set of pilot trading cards. As I'm well. going to show you the one that I'm most excited for is 18 K is the pop socket. You know, the little circle. Oh yeah. Like in the I need one of those. Back in my well, house. if we get to 18K, everyone will get one for Holy me. Fuck. And the cool thing about pop sockets is this is an official pop socket, if there is yeah. such a thing as official. They're interchangeable. You can screw them off and screw a new one on. So once the 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 plate, this circle circular plate is on the phone where it uh, opens and collapses, you can change them. So if you already have a wow. pop socket, you can just put this one on if you want. How cool. Um, yeah. I mean, there I are other stretch goals, but 20K is where we need to get. You guys are like... This is like the most bang for the buck I've seen on anything lately. So kudos to you These for are, giving such cool stuff. Thank you. Thanks. We These are the other mission this. briefings, like the one we unlocked today. These are the ones that have been unlocked so far. This is Valkyrie's flight. That's the main character, Mother, flanked by the oh. cyborg Valkyrie on the left and the red Valkyrie on the right because we launched on red Valkyrie's stream. And if you didn't Who did get that? these... That's Chuma Hill. Uh, okay. Chuma Hill is Very one nice. of the only artists that's on this campaign that is not an Indiegogo community Comics Gate artist. We have 20 gotcha. Comics Gate artists that did prints and covers, and then five that did merchandise. So we not only did we like make a big bang for the buck, we hired everybody in house. You know what I mean? <laughs> Chuma Hill is one of the only ones, but it was because. I think it was Cy and Shay were talking about how beautiful Chuma's art style was. And I yes. was listening. And they were yeah. like, oh my God, we need something from Chuma Hill. And I was like, okay, well, we'll do that. Yeah, uh, that and we're sending them the original art. So they, they get that. Uh, wow. This is the mission briefing Bogan's Bombardment for Bancroft's <laughs> audience. I remember seeing that. That's yep. awesome. There's the ARO print and, uh, and Pull Out Pigeon. And, and this is and, Ricardo, Jamie, and Marcus Martin. Yep. 
and uh, wow. they did uh, they did Dixie Rose, right? Yeah. Now, then on, I was going to ask you on a lot of this artwork, um, if it's traditional, are you guys probably keeping it for yourself, or will it ever be made available for? We'll make it available for fans. Uh, we'll absolutely make it available. I think some of the artists wanted to keep theirs and auction it or show yeah. it or uh, frame it. Who Ricardo knows? Jamie, I think, wants to sell ARO as an NFT. Yeah. So well, he didn't okay. do it physically. He no, did it, yeah, he, he did, did it, it digitally. digitally. So, so. <laughs> AR AR fifteen orangutan will be an NFT. Yes, that's happening. <laughs> nice. So keep an eye out. That's for cool. Them. Yeah. And so all of this is still it. available in the campaign, campaign box. box. Yeah, if you missed the if original missed these, secret perk, you can yeah. just pick up the campaign wow. box and you'll get all of it. This is section eight. Uh, it's Sugar Chris in a red dress because if you all know the lore about the Sugar Chris red dress, you know, it's it's effectively a comic skate meme at this point. There will be, a, uh, a, you know, decrypted intel kind of explaining the joke. But if you get the joke, you get the joke. Um, this is the Chrom Com print. Um, we took it. Uh, uh, the inspiration was D DOA's extreme volleyball game that they did. Uh, and in the oh, background, yeah. you can see Crom. Mm -hmm. Crom's down there. Little Pops Van Zant's uh, <laughs> mascot. So, and it's called Madness because he's comic book madness. Oh, God. Now, so that's why it's extreme volleyball madness. And then there was. Uh, it's not called oh. Retro. It's called Full Bullet Magnum. We need to fix oh, the copy. Sorry, I thought I fixed. No, and that's Peter right. Palmiotti's character, Retro, mm -hmm. going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mother, who's given us a nice left cheek, and Jester's unconscious in the background because he did not have a good fight. Um, oh, but, wow. Yeah, so there's a, little bit of, there's a little bit of lore to that, too, because, you know, Peter Palmiotti's a good friend of the channel, so we did a crossover print there. And yours is going to be put right here. Yeah. Oh, now wow. that it's been unve unveiled, we're going to add it to the series. And then there's I'm one other cool thing about this campaign... Um, that now that we've reached 10k, oh yeah, we are donating two books for every 10 backers to Operation Gratitude, which that is so packages awesome. and comic books and things yeah. to military, military first, responders, first responders, veterans. Yeah. So we Wind got, Warrior. I think we have like 164 backers right now. So, so we're six backers away from another two books, and we're $500 away from another stretch goal. It's a lot of books, guys. So. You know, that'll be, 30, that'll be 35 books no, when we break uh, 17. Oh, okay. The 32 right now. Yeah. When we break 17, it'll be 35, right? Uh, I'm sorry, you 170. You guys. No. When we, break one, when we break 170, it'll be 35, right? No. I can't do math. <laughs> sorry, guys. I can't, I can't do math. 34. I, I wanted so that's to, where we're uh, at right now. That's amazing. Um, folks, I, I can't implore to you any more than I already am to – back this especially with this print i mean i'm uh i think this is the first time anyone's included me in a in a campaign that's not my own so i appreciate that and i will definitely look forward to getting the uh the funny face perk and i'll like i said send me the send me the print graphic and i'll and i'll 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 tweet it and get it on my facebook and um all that you've got it thank you so much name. yeah um Absolutely. Let me go back out to see both of you guys here. So we've been kind of posting everywhere where they can back you, your YouTube channel, your Twitter. What's next? I mean, I, obviously you, you've said this is like uh, your first book. Do you, is it to be a set number of, of books or do you plan this to be ongoing? Uh, no, it's it's set. Maverick's Origins is two books, volume one and volume two, and then the Origins arc is complete because Origins itself is sort of a prelude to okay. the series that I've been trying to write. Um, that that's Great kind of start. like where all of the the thesis of this comic book rests because er, I think everything should have a point. You know, escapism is an integral part of this. Um, getting into you know immersing yourself in a world is so valuable these days. But at the same time, you know those worlds can say something about themselves, reflecting upon this one. And there is a, there's definitely a point to what I'm what I'm writing. It's not like an agenda awesome. or anything like that, but there is a heart to this. Yeah, there's, there's, a there's a particular heart. note that I'm trying to hit, a moment that I want to show you guys. And the main series is what gets us there. And that will be gotcha. Maverick's evolution. Yeah, that's Maverick's evolution. Uh, that's I mean that we're 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 evolving from the point that Origins leaves us, and that's I'm a excited for you guys too. That's this is awesome. I just this is an epic campaign folks it's you can tell 
how passionate our guests are. I mean, every detail has been in intricately thought of. And yes. I mean, this is going to be a big box. It's it's uh, big. It might box. even it might even rival Pete Samedi's, you know, because you demanded it. That thing was like, you know, I got a hernia dragging it in from my, from my doorstep. <laughs> but um, hey, you guys have been awesome. I, I hope that we can have you on again. I am flattered by the uh, the great. Don Chin Jester print. And uh, what else can I say, guys? This has been a great show. Probably one of my favorites. Um, Thanks, Don. Anything Thanks so else you guys want to say before we before we? Yeah, if you haven't already out there, Backbeard Zerker, man. It's awesome. Oh, get yourself you. get yourself some of that goodness. We got the the all the covers here because thank you don't want to miss that sick rainbow brute cover. You don't want to miss like <laughs> any of the stuff. I, I think we oh, even man. got the one which comes with the eight uh, not the eight track with the uh MP3 audio file of all of the music that you did because oh, cool. dude, this is about a rock and roll. This is, you know, it's Bill and Ted. You got to get the music too. So. So there's a lot of fun awesome. stuff on Don's campaign. It's yeah. one of the reasons that inspired us to go and do interesting things like yeah. the pop socket and the battle standees. We saw what Don was fun. doing. He was doing all sorts of cool little extras. Yeah. So it inspired us. Go Thank go you. get the you know the forerunner, the progenitor. Go get that campaign. You guys are sweet. I appreciate it. All right. Well, guys, I'm going to uh, usher you out of the, uh, the main screen here. I'm just going to give people actually a little bit of Beard Zerker news. And then I have a tribute to uh, to the famous Ron Popeil, who unfortunately passed away last month. And uh, I don't know if you guys ever watched the old Ronco commercials, but I have a a, a couple classic Ronco commercials that I'm gonna play at the end, just as a as a fun, just a fun thing. <laughs> so, Thanks um, for, uh, you for guys, having us. Thank, thank you so for letting much. us have so much time too. I appreciate. Oh, it. it was great. It went by so fast. I know it's only. I gave you like an hour after I did the unboxing, so I'm glad that we got we got to take our time, and and do that. So, guys, I'm sure I will see you online, and I definitely catch your uh, your show. You have a great a karaoke show every weekend, right? Every other weekend, or yep, every other weekend. It will be um, this weekend. This weekend, we've tried so um, many times to get this had, thing going. We've had a couple of uh, hiccups between Trificon and then Call technical difficulties, so. This Sunday, for sure, regular same bat time, same bat channel. All right, here. cool. All right, guys, well, you take care and have a great day. Thanks, Thanks Don. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. All right, so there's Aaron and Frequency Girl from uh, that wonderful campaign, Mavericks. Looks like a great, great book. Uh, I wanted to let you folks know on Beard Zerker, which uh, they were so graciously kind to mention, we are – over 9,000 in, in backing on that. So some of the stuff that I have shown, maybe you haven't seen it, uh, everybody that backs this book, which is only like a $15 book, if you just want to get one issue, um, you can get a full 32-page comic book, which is going to be on nice, glossy paper. There's all sorts of different choices that you can make. Let me see if I can point you out to the Beard Zerker page. Um, yeah, just go to beardzerker.com and it'll take you right to the Indiegogo page. So we are uh, in the home stretch of getting it ready to go to press. I, I would hope within the next couple of weeks, we'll be able to send it off to the printer and then it takes them a couple of weeks. So we'll probably be fulfilling not too long from now. But uh, besides your choice of glorious covers, you can buy all of them for $77 with uh, low shipping, or you can just back one or whatever your choice is. But we've got this really cool Beard Zerker guitar pick, which we improved on the prototype. The prototype was okay, but you didn't really get to see the uh, uh, Bill Mouse's artwork as well. So we went and found an actual guitar pick maker out of Florida called Picks of Destiny. And they actually work with a lot of rock and roll bands and they do really high quality picks. So it's not pearlescent on the back, but it's a thick white, one. I know Anthony from Dark Gift, you're a professional guitar player. Um, he got one of the prototypes and we'll probably still fulfill some with the prototypes until we run out, but everybody's going to get this one, which is a really nice one. So you're going to get that pick. Um, we've got the cool uh, Cat Stevens die cut sticker for the first, I think we said the first 35 that signed up and then I bought some more of these. So if you were one of the early backers, you're going to get one of these rare 
Cat Stevens uh, die cut stickers. Some of our backers will get the Jim O'Reilly hollow foil um, Bill and Ted homage cover that's colored by uh, Sigmund Torres. And this is a, a fun three inch round sticker. And then some of our backers will get a cool Beard Zerker and Cat Stevens square magnet. And then since we hit 9,000, we're actually unlocking the uh, trading cards. So the, uh, the backers that signed up for our pre-launch are getting a trading card. And then we're going to have to design a second trading card now that we hit 9,000. So that's exciting, guys. At 10,000, I think... I think uh, I did advertise a magnet. So if, if we hit 10,000, then I think everybody, I think we just had these done just to kind of see how they would look. And so uh, I think if, if, if we hit 10,000, then we'll have to go back to the press with, you know, getting more of these made. So uh, things are going good there. Uh, what else can I tell you guys? Let's see what, boy, the chat's going nuts. <laughs> you guys are having fun today. Eric had to go. Oh, he said it and forget it. Yes, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and see um, uh, some play some some Ron Papil uh, uh, tributes. You guys have seen on my show if you've watched this before. We've had um, uh, Vince from Slap Chop. There's a couple people on YouTube that have done music mixes to Vince. Actually, my wife doesn't like Vince that much, but I think he's got the Slap Chop rap and. Uh, some sham wow thing and i think they're very funny but i think my wife thinks he's kind of annoying but she said you know ron popeel passed away why don't you do something with ron popeel so uh you know find some kind of mashup with ron popeel and so i went online yesterday and i found a couple videos so i'm gonna play one and then i'm gonna play another one and i'm gonna warn you that the second one is not for kids <laughs> It's got some, it's got some language, but um, honestly, I was busting a gut uh, laughing at it when I saw it. Uh, Herrenberg, I wanted to thank you again for your, your moderation. You are awesome, and you, you, I know you're close with Marvin. So please back Herrenberg's projects as well as the Edge. They're friends of our channel. Good, good people. Um, let's see. Herrenberg says, Mr. Popeil, I was thinking about that. I knew he did that song, and um, honestly, it's not one of my favorite Weird Al. It's something melodically about it just kind of um, kind of ruffles my feathers. It's not one of Al Weird Al's better songs. I know it's just kind of a, a novelty, but anyways, um, let's go ahead and watch some Ron Papil. Rest in peace, Ron. Uh, that'll do it for our show. I hope you guys have a great one. I'll have another show hopefully next week. I don't have a guest yet. I'll have to figure out who we're going to have on or what the theme's going to be. But uh, enjoy these Ron Papil uh, tributes. And, and until next time, I hope you guys have a great day. And we'll talk to you later. All right, hang on. It's coming. It's coming. Okay, here, like I said, the first one is, is legit. The second video is not legit. And like I said, it don't if you're at work, you do not want to blast this. <laughs> up on your screen because <clears throat> it's got some f-bombs in it so i'm just going to warn you guys ahead of time all right have fun glh means great looking hair just spray glh on and it instantly covers your bald spot leaving you with great looking hair and ladies with thinning hair or bald spot glh solves the problem instantly glh is not a paint or a cover-up it's an amazing powder that clings to the tiniest hairs on your head it actually builds on itself leaving you with great, great-looking hair. And the GLH hair system is not expensive. Wow, <laughs> that's incredible. This is the first time I've ever used this product. I saw it on the uh, infomercials, and I was skeptical at first, um, but uh, it, it works. I'll tell you what, I can't believe it. You know, I've seen the commercial, and I, I, I just couldn't believe it. And it really looks great. My wife's got herself a new guy now, and I'll tell you, I'm really impressed. That's incredible. I've been getting harassing for being bald, and I'm only a young man. No more dates without being called old man, but the babes are back. I would definitely, as a matter of fact, I want to order one year's supply of this. And GLH is not just for men. Unbelievable. Wow. I never dreamed that I'd look like this. 
Applying GLH to yourself is so easy. Just spray on while holding a small hand mirror in front with the larger mirror behind you. Then brush after using the finishing shield and you're done. And with GLH, there's no problem with rain or when working out. It's a phenomenal product. I highly recommend it. The club saved a lot of money. GLH is muy bueno y es increíble. Oh, I started using GLH about four months ago after my barber told me I'd never grow any more hair. <laughs> hey, Emmett, look at me now. <laughs> a full head of hair. <laughs> Order GLH now for only $39.92 and get the $15 trim comb free. Or send $39.92 plus S&H to Ronco, Box 4057, Beverly Hills, California. I'm Steve Bryant, your host today for the best-selling rotisserie in the universe. Hey, thank you, Steve. It's the uh, Showtime rotisserie and barbecue toaster thing. <clears throat> look at just some of the great foods you can prepare in your new Showtime rotisserie. Now look at this fucking huge fucking turkey here. High protein, low carb diet, two five pounds. Oh, look at this loin roast, high protein. Look at these burgers. They're the fucking delicious. Look at these bananas. Look at these fucking kebabs, high protein. Look at this fucking loin, lamb, giant turkey, three hours only. Look at these vegetables, vegetables, all of them. Look at these wieners, high protein, protein, low carb diet. Look at this uh, heart, look at this fucking liver. Look at it, look at this uh, lobster, look at the rib. It's fucking beautiful, I mean it's high protein, you can't get any better. Look at this fucking lung. Look at the baby back rib. High protein. You gotta get this. I mean... He is a guru of gastronomics. The raconteur of ribs. The salt and sex it and forget it. He is America's inventor. HBO is doing a major motion picture about his life. Fuck him. Fuck his inventions. My inventions are so much more fun. He's with us today. A big round of applause for America's inventor, Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil!